diverse views become our leaders. Did you watch that show last night on Fox My called God, The Wise Guys? Excellent. It was shot in uh, Las Vegas with, among others, uh, Dr. Alan Dershowitz. You know him, a law school professor, Harvard guy, lifelong Democrat, author of the book, Trumped Up. Good morning to you. Good morning. Nice to see how, you. How do we get to this place where college campuses are now just doing what? Well, first, we need to encourage dissent on college campuses. You know, when I was a kid, they tried to censor us. That was Joe McCarthy. That was the right. Today, it's the hard left that tries to center, censor the, the center, conservatives, people who espouse religious values, and there aren't enough college professors who stand up for the right of dissent. The students are doing it. They're doing a great job, but they're not getting the support of the faculty. They're not getting the support of the administrators. So how do you fix this in Tolerance 101? Well, first of all, you fight back. You never, ever allow the bullies, and that's what these are. These are bullies, some of the student groups and some of the faculty groups. They try to shut you down. They scream and yell when you speak. They protest when you come on campus. Look, I'm a centrist liberal. Every time I speak on a campus, there are protests. There are efforts, shut him down, don't let him speak. Um, but these students worry about retaliation, and so do some of the professors. If you go against what the school is preaching, you could get fired, you could get an F on a, as a grade. Well, it's not so much what the school is preaching, it's what some hard left professors are preaching. They're a minority, but they are the loudest minority. And remember, it's these radical lefties that can shut the school down. That's why they're so frightened of them. Are they really the minority, though? Even when I was in college at, at, at Princeton, you know, 34 of the 35 history professors were registered Democrats or leftist. Side. It's, it's been this way, but it's gotten even more extreme. Now those graduate students, as you pointed out, baptized in hard left, are now the professors. How do you change, I mean, to, to her question, how do you actually go in and change this complex? Well, first of all, the fact that there are many Democrats, I agree with that. If we want real diversity, we have to diversify the mm -hmm. student body, diversify the faculty, not only on the grounds of race and gender, but on the grounds of ideology as well. But, you know, the liberal Democrat, like me, is the subject. They hate me more than they hate conservatives, because we're the ones who the might be able to influence the students, and we're the ones who they want to shut down. Yeah. And that kind of intolerance is just not accepted. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it's the administrators that don't have the courage to stand up to these students because they know these students can make their lives miserable. Well, it would be hard to have a litmus test where you've got to, you know, no, okay, of we're going to hire a certain number of Democrats. But there's a hidden litmus test. Absolutely, but everybody should be for the freedom of speech. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you get now professors who are writing articles against freedom of speech. There's a professor at NYU. There's a, a number of professors who now say, What's the big deal about freedom of speech? We know the truth, capital T, right. capital T. Why do we need dissenting views? You know, we're going to, I might do an interview next month with Robbie George at Princeton. There are some examples of places oh, yeah, where of there is a beachhead for conservatives who are simply saying there's another view. And, and liberals and conservatives to have to get together on this because it's liberals and conservatives together mm -hmm. who are being silenced by the extremes, the extremes on the left, and there are some extremes on the right. The people at Charlottesville, obviously, didn't want to hear dissenting views, and I think it's the responsibility of liberals like me to take on the radical left, the responsibility of conservatives to take on the radical right, and the conservatives are doing a better job. Guys Charlottesville didn't have tenure, though. No. <laughs> now, the liberal, liberal left, mainstream media, they're running with this narrative now that the president is not mentally fit to be in the White House. Is there some damage there? It's very dangerous. I've railed against the criminalization of political difference. It's getting worse. The psychiatrization of political differences is much more dangerous. It's what they did in Russia. It's what they did in China. It's what they did in apartheid South Africa. If you don't like a candidate, first lock them up. If you can't lock them up, commit them to a mental hospital. There's a professor at Yale named Brandy Lee who has been leading the campaign, saying the president's dangerous, he has access to the nuclear trigger, we may even have to confine him against his will under a kind of commitment law. Imagine how dangerous that would be, and you know, psychiatrists are notoriously bad at predicting violence. When he's not even their patient. And remember that what they're looking at are things they knew about before the, he was elected president. Look, yeah. I didn't like what I saw necessarily, so I did what you do in a democracy. You vote for the candidate you prefer. I preferred Hillary Clinton. I knew about her. I knew about him. I made a balanced judgment. But you don't lock them up. You don't 
put them in mental hospitals if you don't agree with them. That's so dangerous to democracy. Helen, so many people on the left, they're looking at the Michael Wolff book and they're talking about how apparently some aides in the West Wing have whispered about, you know, we really should consider the 25th Amendment because <laughs> the boss, not good upstairs. Explain the 25th Amendment. 25th Amendment is designed for when somebody has a stroke or somebody is unconscious. Perhaps what happened uh, when President Wilson uh, was president and he had a stroke, a serious mm -hmm. stroke. It's not designed for differences about a person's emotional makeup. First, the vice president has to invoke it. Second, if the president... Which would not happen. No, if the president disputes it, you need two-thirds of both houses of Congress. Forget about it. It would happen only if any president, I'm not talking about a particular one, right. had a major psychotic break. Uh, look, we once had a secretary of defense. Uh, his name was Forrester. He jumped out of the window uh, of the Walter Reed Center. He thought the communists were coming after him. He was the secretary of defense. Okay, that's a proper basis for removing somebody from office, but not disagreement about policies, politics, style, even emotional approach to problems. You have a president who says, I have a bigger nuclear button than you do. You have a friend, oh, by the way, one of the things she talks about that's a symptom of his mental illness mm -hmm. is that he recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And so did the majority of the Senate and majority of the House. And so did I support that. Am I getting that locked up now? Yeah, we might need to. So to quote from Alan Dershowitz regarding the 25th Amendment, and this president, forget about forget it. Forget about it. It's not going to happen unless, you know, God forbid, any president has a stroke or anything like this. But taking what he ran on, and that's why he yeah. was elected president, and using that to invoke the 25th Amendment would undercut the basic content of the framers of the You are a wise guy, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My mother always said to me, don't be a wise guy. Don't be a wise guy. You were a wise guy. Thank you. Thank you.